Hello, and welcome back for lecture six. So in the previous lecture, uh, we covered a few things, uh, user input and how to use text input. Uh, we covered some simple input validation to just make sure that the input that we receive is the input that we want. Uh, we talked about keyboard avoiding view, which is uh, built into React Native, which allows us to move inputs out of the way as the keyboard, the virtual keyboard appears. Uh, we talked about some various debugging strategies, uh, how to log errors and warnings. We talked about Chrome developer tools and how to send our JavaScript to be executed there rather than on the device itself. We talked about the React Native Inspector and React Dev Tools, two other ways of viewing the UI and um, to solve bugs that have to do with UI things. And finally, we talked about installing external libraries with NPM. And there I alluded to um, a library that we're going to start using called React Navigation. And today, we're joined by Eric and Brent here, um, who were co-authors of this, this library called React Navigation. Um, Brent right here works at Expo, and he uh, helped write React Navigation. And Eric over here uh, was on the React Native team at Facebook um, and also helped write the React Navigation library. So I'll turn it over to them um, for React Navigation. Great, thank you. All right. So I think the first question we need to answer here is, what is navigation exactly? Um, so navigation is a pretty broad term. Uh, it covers pretty much any topic related to moving between screens in your app or moving between different locations in your app. Um, web navigation, you might be familiar with already, which is very oriented around URLs. You enter something into the URL bar, and as a result of that changing, you change the screen that you're on uh, or potentially just an entirely different website. Um, mobile apps don't really use URLs so much, at least not for navigating within the app. Um, usually in mobile apps, uh, URLs are used for something called deep linking. Uh, we won't be talking about that too much today, so I've just added a link here to the slide. So if you want to learn more about deep linking, you can follow that. So the navigation APIs are, are very different between iOS and Android. They could not be really more different at all. There, there's almost no similarities, honestly. Um, and so it's quite a challenge to uh, do what React Native is trying to do uh, in many regards and, and uh, in, in the realm of navigation and try and bring these together and make a kind of platform agnostic API for um, how to use these different um, sort of platform specific patterns for navigation uh, while also making the API for interfacing with that very similar across platforms. Um, and so there are several libraries that attempt to solve this problem. Um, we're going to talk about React Navigation today. So again, just to give you sort of a gut feeling of what we're talking about, um, on the web with the desktop web browser, this is typically what you would uh, consider navigation. You scroll somewhere, you click a link, brings you to another URL, the page changes. Um, there is a back button, a refresh button, forward button, and an address bar. On mobile, uh, with a mobile web browser, it's very similar. Um, the main distinction that you'll see on mobile is that there is some UI that you uh, get for free, actually, with a mobile web browser where you can swipe back on your screen or swipe forward on your screen. And that will allow you to navigate between uh, different pages that you visited in, in your history. The trade-off here with having these gestures is that you actually have very little control over them. So they're there whether you want to use the gesture for something else on your page or not. Um, you're, you're just kind of stuck with them. Um, and the same thing is true for the navigation bar on the bottom of the screen with the back button and, and uh, various other options. Uh, that does interfere with putting content near the bottom of the screen. So when it is hidden and you attempt to tap something on the bottom of the screen, it, it shows up and you have to tap again. Um, so you get a lot, but there are some costs to it. Mobile navigation feels more like this, where maybe you have a tab bar on the bottom, um, like this one. You move between various screens. When you tap on some link to go to another screen within the app, uh, it might slide in over top, and you can swipe back from there. And really, the key thing here is that you kind of control the entire experience as an app developer. It's almost like you have your own sort of browser implementation but the only content that you're browsing is the content of your app. Um, and the, the actual behavior that you get out of navigation in your app is entirely uh, up to you. So React Navigation is um, kind of distinguished from 
some other libraries in the uh, React Native ecosystem in terms of how it approaches implementing navigation. So uh, the kind of, there, there are sort of two distinct approaches. The, the first one is to mainly implement the logic and the views in JavaScript. And so the majority of your uh, implementation is just plain React all the way down in the stack. Uh, a second alternative approach is to uh, write a wrapper for the existing native APIs that exist on iOS and Android um, and try to smooth those differences out using a just basically an alternative sort of front-end API for how you interact with, with these APIs. Um, React Navigation takes the first approach. Um, I, I won't go into too many details here. Um, there are some things that are self-evident from just looking at the, the, uh, the sort of characterizing feature of the approach in that if it's mainly in JavaScript and you are a JavaScript developer, you will know how to work with any part of the tool. Uh, whereas if you wrap a native API, you suddenly, when you want to extend it or change something uh, or debug a problem, you have to become familiar with uh, Swift or Objective-C or Java or Kotlin or something like that. So we chose the first approach here. Um, and there's more information in the docs, which I've linked to here, as well as some information on alternative libraries if this isn't uh, your preferred approach. So first thing we're going to do here is install React Navigation. Um, so as you saw last lecture, npm install, library name, um, dash dash save, depending on the version of npm that you're using. Newer versions, that's not necessary. Um, one thing that's a little bit different here is that we've specified a version number explicitly. Uh, typically, if you install with just the React Navigation package, it will get the latest stable version of the package. However, for the sake of this lecture, um, we are just about to release a new version of React Navigation. Uh, currently, the stable version is 1.5 or so, and uh, React Navigation 2 has some significant differences, so we wanted to make sure that uh, the things that you're learning today don't go out of date next week. Um, yeah, so if you're referring to this in the future, keep in mind you should use a 2.x series of releases. So some key concepts before we really get into the code here. Um, I think it's worth um, clarifying these three sort of big terms in React Navigation. You're going to see these a lot. Uh, the first one is navigator. The second one is a route or routes. And then screen components. So a navigator is a component that implements a navigation pattern. Um, so an example would be in the mobile app that we saw in that video just moments ago, the uh, tabs are a certain navigation pattern, and you would have a navigator that is associated with that pattern. Uh, we'll see in more detail, of course, what that means um, shortly. Uh, another type is a stack navigator. So when you tap on something, and it pushes a new screen onto the stack, and so on and so on as you add more screens. And it gives you the sort of swipe back behavior. So each navigator has one or more routes. Uh, a navigator is a parent of a route. And a route is a child of a navigator. Don't worry too much about this right now. It'll become more clear very shortly. Um, just want to make sure we're clear up front on exactly what these are. So each route must have a name and a screen component. So the name is usually unique across the app. Um, that's a safe assumption to make, uh, at least for now and, and the near future. When you get into some more complicated use cases, it may not be true. Um, but you will hopefully have the intuition at that point to understand uh, why that is the case. Uh, the screen component is a React component that is rendered when the route is active. So in the tab, for example, that we saw, uh, there is a screen associated with the sort of feed, uh, the feed tab, and there is a screen associated with the settings tab and search tab and so on. And so those in React Navigation are React components. Uh, now, another thing that uh, Eric will speak about a bit later is that a screen component can also be another navigator. And this is a powerful concept that uh, would be very difficult to build apps without. And so we will discuss that once we have a bit more foundational knowledge. So we're going to start off with the easiest, most simple navigator, and one that translates sort of directly from the example that uh, was being worked on last class, the contacts list example. Um, so the switch navigator is a navigator that is capable of displaying one screen at a time, 
when a screen goes inactive, it is unmounted. And the only, user, the only action the user can take is to say, I want to go from this th screen to this other screen. Uh, so it's very straightforward. Um, it kind of looks like this. Uh, you have screen one, and we have a button, let's say, go to screen two. If I press go to screen two, it simply does this. The other one's gone. The first one appears. Or sorry, the, the second one appears. Basically, as you tap on these buttons, you're just switching between the screens. All right, and so to create this navigator, we import create switch navigator from React Navigation. We call it with a uh, map where the keys are uh, the names of the routes and the values are the screen components. When we actually want to render it, we just take the return value of the create switch navigator function and we render it inside of our app component. Usually this is at the root of our app. Um, and we'll see why that is, again, when we talk about composition. So uh, this is kind of a new concept here, the idea of uh, create switch navigator as being a function that returns a component. So I just wanted to take a moment to explain what that is exactly. Um, so a create switch navigator is a higher order component in that it is a function that returns a React component. Uh, so a higher order component as defined in the React uh, documentation is an advanced technique for uh, reusing component logic. And so the component logic we're reusing in this case is the behavior of how a switch navigator works. And we're saying, we want you to be a switch navigator that has these screens and these route names. And the logic for how it operates given those parameters is built into the underlying switch navigator. This is pretty similar to the idea of higher order functions, if you've ever used those before. Um, so if you've used something like for each or map uh, or filter, those sorts of functions, which are functions that take functions, um, also functions that return functions, those are uh, higher order functions. And the same thing applies for, uh, for higher order components. So when we want to go from one screen to another screen, um, we simply call this.props.navigation.navigate, and we pass in the route name. So going back here to the definition, you can see the route name corresponds to the screen component. And when we call navigate, we give the route name, and it simply switches to show the component corresponding to that route name. The navigation prop is passed into every screen component automatically. So it's available on this.props.navigation. Um, and it has a variety of, uh, of useful methods available on it. Uh, we're looking at navigate here. We'll see a little bit more later about go back and set params and get param. Um, and we won't cover some of these other more advanced ones. Um, but again, it's worth looking in the documentation for when you want to learn some more advanced use cases. All right, so let's uh, put this to use going to start our first example. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just open up a new tab while I run exp start dash dash iOS. So exp is the command line equivalent of xde, which you've been using so far. Um, I'll make that a little bit bigger for you. Hopefully that works. And so it's essentially the same thing. And um, running exp start iOS is just like opening a project in XDE and hitting open on device with iOS. Just open that here. While that's going on, I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And we're right inside of our app. Let's wait for this to start. OK, so we have our app up there. So this is essentially the app that you finished last class. And um, we're going to continue on this shortly. But first, let's just build this sort of abstract example of using a switch navigator. And then we'll see how we can integrate that into what we've already built. So to do that, I'm actually going to go back here and make an examples directory. And I'm just going to create file called examples. Let's just call it switch, zero dash switch. And go back in here. All right. First thing we're going to do 
is import React from React. Let's make that a bit bigger for you as well. And as we saw before, create switch navigator from React navigation. OK. And, and do class. OK, so we know we need to return something here. Um, created our app navigator like this, calling switch navigator, and passing in a map of route names um, and screen components. So first route name, um, we'll just go with sort of the example we've been using so far and just call it route name one. Could call it CS50. Could call it whatever, whatever you want, but for the sake of demonstration, we'll just call it that. Um, and now we've run into a situation where we need a screen component. So let's create one here. It's just any old React component will do. Um, I will call it screen component one. Let's import a couple of things from React Native. Uh, let's do a button and a view just to give some contents to the screen so we can actually do something with it. And render a view. Let's make it take up the full screen. Uh, align everything in the middle. Uh, justify to the middle. Not bad. And let's give it a border just so we can see easily the differences between screen one and screen two. I'm going to say border width is 25 and border color. I'll just make it teal here. And let's add a button, and we'll do something with that in a moment. And I'll just format that. It appears we have an error somewhere. Ah, perfect. OK. So this is some invalid syntax, because we need to drop in the actual name of the screen component. So now what we have here is a, an app navigator, which has a single route. And the route renders the screen component one component, which is simply a button that does absolutely nothing, but is centered in the middle of the screen. Um, now to actually have this display in our app, we need to render the navigator somewhere. And going back here, we're just going to comment all that out for now and import example from examples 0 dash switch and render that there. So if I go back here, oh, looks like we have a typo. Uh, ah, of course, we missed out on a very important step. We missed out on actually installing React Navigation, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, so to do this, uh, in the slides, I said you can use NPM. Uh, there's an alternative to NPM called Yarn. Um, I personally prefer it. It's really up to personal preference here, ultimately. Um, it's, it's fast, and it has, in my opinion, some nicer uh, tooling associated with it. So uh, I'm going to run Yarn add here, and Yarn add React Navigation at 2.0.0-beta.3. And once that's done. As you can see, it's quite fast. We can refresh this. And so we have something here. We have essentially a pretty useless thing, but, um, but it is being rendered by the switch navigator. Um, now, to demonstrate actually some useful behavior here, let's just copy and paste this screen component and create screen component 2. I'm going to give it a different border color. And I'm going to make it say, go to screen 1. Lastly, I'm going to add an on press function here so that when you press on the button, we're going to navigate to the second screen from the first screen. And then I'll add the same thing to the second screen so that when we press on it, we go back to the first screen. So you might remember from previous slide, we do navigation.navigate, 
And we currently haven't defined a route for this, but we'll just call it route name two. And this similar thing can be done down here, except as per the title, go to screen one, we're going to send it to route name one. Now I can just change these. And you can see when we press on these buttons, we're switching from one screen to the other. So this is the, the most simplistic navigator possible, essentially. Only show one screen at a time, and um, we could switch between the various screens that we have in the navigator. This might look kind of familiar to you, because this is essentially what is happening in the contact list example. When you press um, add contact, we're uh, setting some state on the app component to say, we are now showing the form. So we toggle show form from false to true. And we stop rendering the list of contacts. And we start rendering the uh, contact form. And this is the same sort of pattern, um, but in a more structured sort of approach that as hopefully as we continue, you'll start to see uh, the benefits of what may seem like a little bit more complexity up front. Um, but let's go ahead and convert the example uh, that we have. Uh, let's see where we are here. Yeah, let's convert the example um, to use a switch navigator. Right, so we're, we have that right now. We're going to keep it to look exactly the same, but the only difference is the underlying implementation will use a switch navigator. So let's go back here. We don't need this anymore. I'm going to uncomment the whole app. And current implementation, right, set state. When we want to toggle context show form, set state show form true. So we're not going to need that anymore. There are a few things we need to do first to get prepared for this. Um, I'm going to pull out these uh, components uh, that are implicitly sort of screens inside of the app into separate components that I'm just going to add a suffix of screen to. And that, that's just the convention that is very common um, it, when structuring these applications. So I'm going to make a screens directory. And then I'm going to create a, let's see, yeah, add contact screen. And oh, that actually has to be in the screens directory. And I'm going to create a contact list screen. Screens. So this is just a matter of shuffling stuff around now. We no longer need show form. We'll leave show contacts there for now, but its days are numbered. Um, and we're going to rip this out. So add contact form. We'll start with this one. Go into screens, add contact screen, and add contact form. Put that one in here as well. And In fact, why don't I just copy this from an already completed version of that. Uh, there we go. So all I did there was uh, require, or rather import, the add contact form and then move some behavior here, which will explain this line in a moment. Uh, so I'll comment that out. Uh, but essentially just render the form and pass some sort of submit function through. Um, I'm going to do the same thing now with the List screen. Go over here. Just copy that in. So, contact list screen is essentially just all of the logic that we had inside of the app component previously of toggle contacts, um, some state about whether we're showing the contacts. We have a section list contacts component that is rendered down here. Uh, we just don't maintain the show form state anymore. Uh, instead, when you press show form, we navigate to the add contact route. So let's go back to the app. We have a good amount of stuff we can delete here. This all now lives outside of the app component. It's inside of the contact list screen. So we can remove that. And we can remove various other things. Toggle contacts is now the other component. Sort is unused. Show form is not used here. Instead, we need to render something here, uh, rather return something here. 
And that needs to be our switch navigator. So let's add a create switch navigator. And it was, let's check the name of that. It was add contact, it was the name of our route. And it was add contact screen. And then there was, uh, what was that referred to as here? I guess we'll just call it contact list screen. And that will be, or sorry, contact list will be contact list screen. And we want the app to start off as being on the contact list screen and not on the add contact screen. So I'm just going to add this other parameter here, initial route name, and say contact list. Now if we like that, scroll right down and render app navigator, we have a missing import. Of course, we need to import add contact screen from screens, add, add contact screen. And we need to import uh, contact list screen from contact list screen. Uh, OK, that's good. So let's pop right in here. Screen props. I'm just going to ren render an empty view here for now so we at least have something showing up. Um, and the problem here is that currently, the way that it worked is when it all lived inside one component, it was very clear where our contact state lived. It was simply a state inside of the app, which we passed in as a prop to our contact list, um, and that we updated by calling add contact on the app, which then updated the state. It's a little bit different when we have something like this, where we're returning an add navigator, or sorry, app navigator uh, component, which in turn then renders our contact list screen. So we need some way to say, pass this prop through to the screens inside of, uh, inside of the application. And for that, there's something called screen props. So if you specify screen props, you're able to pass in um, an object where that object is passed into every screen component in the navigator. So it's a little caveat there. It's very good for prototyping and for, for examples like this. However, as you will learn um, in the performance lecture later on, um, there are better ways to do this. And you'll talk a little bit about Redux later on. Um, and so this is just generally a, a potentially a useful escape hatch that you can use in in prototypes and such, but I wouldn't count on it in a large application. It's perfectly fine here, though. So the way this works is that we pass in some screen props to the top level navigator, and then inside of our screen components, we say this.props.screenprops. whatever the thing is that we want to access. So here, what we want to access is we want contacts, which is here. All right, so let's go back to contact list. So as you can see, we're um, passing in the section list contacts based off of this.props.screenprops.contacts. So unless there's a typo, that should work. And there we go. Um, and we can navigate to this screen. However, we currently don't have any way of actually updating the contact, because previously we were able to call directly into um, add contact from the form, but we're not passing in this prop anymore to the add contact form. Um, and so we need to use screen props again to pass this function through. So we can say add contact is this dot add contact. And let's format that. And on add contact screen. If I just uncomment that line, now that should do what we need. So let's say Eric V, one, two, three, four, five, and hit submit. All right, so that now updates here. 
So certainly there are some costs here in terms of a little bit of added complexity. Uh, but we have added some structure that now at least we can continue to grow in our application. We were quite limited in what we were able to do in the contact list before when it all lived inside of this one component. Now we sort of have a, a clear way to add on new screens and jump between those screens without having to depend on adding some new state every time we want to add another screen. All right. Let's move on then to the next topic. The next topic is Stack Navigator. So the Switch Navigator is very primitive in, in what it could accomplish, switch from one screen to another. Uh, but typically, uh, the potentially the most common navigation in mobile apps, depending on the app, is to tap on some button and then have it push some screen on top. Or on Android, it kind of fades in from the bottom. Um, and then there's some back button available to you where you press it in the header and it goes back to the other screen. And, um, that kind of flow is extremely common. And of course, uh, we have to provide a solution for that with React Navigation. And the way that that works is with something called Stack Navigator. So it provides the platform-specific layout, animations, and gestures that you'd expect from this kind of uh, navigation pattern. Um, so we get the screen sliding in from left, or sorry, right to left. Um, you can dismiss by swiping. Uh, there are modals that go from bottom to top, and you can swipe down, uh, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, you can push items to the stack. Uh, you can pop from the stack, replace the current item, et cetera. And so it, it's called stack, of course, because of its relationship to the stack data structure. Um, so if you are curious about kind of conceptually how this data manipulation works um, and you're not familiar with the stack data structure yet, that's uh, just worth checking out so you get some good mental model for it. So the stack navigator looks something like this. You press go to two in this case. The two screen slides on, we say go to three. Third screen slides on. If we press back, it goes back, swipe, or rather animates away, and similar for that one. So let's push these back on, and let's see what it looks like actually behind the scenes right now. Because um, we knew that with the switch navigator, when we switch from one screen to another, we unmount the screen that we switched away from. It is now no longer rendered, it is not in memory. Um, it does not exist as far as our application is concerned. Uh, but in a stack navigator, we keep all of these previous routes uh, and previous screens mounted and in memory because we need to have them there. We need to know, what, you know, when we're three screens deep into the app, we still need to maintain the scroll position that we had, for example, in the feed on the first screen. Um, and we need to be able to show the screen immediately when we start swiping back from one screen to the other screen. And so these all need to stay there and they need to maintain their state. Uh, there can be exceptions that you can customize, but this is the generic expected behavior. Creating a stack navigator is very similar to switch. We simply swap out the word uh, switch for stack, and we have something working. Um, to go from one screen to another, similarly, we use the navigate function. There is a small difference here in that um, stack actually supports a tracking a history. So when you call go back, it will pop the topmost uh, screen from the stack and um, transition back to the screen before it. So let's look at how to implement this inside of our example. We're going to go back to the app and once again comment all this out. And I'm just going to add another example here. Uh, this one, of course, will be called stack touch examples one dash stack dot js. And it's very similar to our switch, so I'm just going to paste in our example to start with and switch out the word switch for stack. And let's see what we get. So now when I press go to screen two, it transitions to the second screen. When I swipe back like this, we get this kind of gesture. Or if I press that button, it goes back. Uh, another way to do it is by just pressing go to screen one. And it just knows that we already have screen one uh, here in our route stack. And so in order to get to it, we have to pop the top screen and transition back. So another thing that is 
very necessary in uh, stack navigators is the ability to customize the UI that surrounds the stack navigator. Um, for example, as you can see here, there's this header. Um, it has a title. The title changes depending on the screen that you're on. Um, you may want to style it in some certain way to say that the color for the title is a certain color, the, the bar is a certain color, et cetera. And so to do that, we have this static property that we can use on screen components called navigation options. Um, every navigator has uh, a set of navigation options that um, screens can use to configure it. And you can see the full list for the stack navigator in the documentation linked here. Uh, for now, we're just going to look at a few of them. We're going to start with header title and, and dig into some, some styling there as well. So let's go up to screen component one. And let's set a navigation options title. We'll call this one. I think I said first screen in the example before. Um, let's give it header title. And for screen component two, I'll just say screen the second. OK, so now we see the title, first screen. And as we go to screen two, screen the second. And it's a small device, so it has gone ahead and truncated um, and ellipsized the title for us in that case. And if we go back, it does that. Similarly, the back button in this case says back and not the title of the previous screen uh, because there's no space to render the full title. So it takes care of a lot of this sort of nuanced behavior for you that users really expect from, uh, from navigation on, on iOS and on Android. Uh, let's style it a bit. Let's say um, the tint color here, we'll just make it match the border. So if I set the tint color, what that impacts is the button color. So if I had a back button on the screen, it would become teal. Um, it also impacts the title and any other thing that is uh, sort of an element that's rendered on top of, of the header. Uh, we could set a header background color through header style. So if I wanted to make this, well, it's already quite white. Let's just say it needs to be a bit more gray for some reason. Uh, let's do that. OK, so that's a bit gray. That's kind of boring. Uh, we can make it green. It's not so legible, but you get the idea. <laughs> um, so let's get rid of that. All right. Uh, let's continue on then. And pop right back in. Another thing that's really important with stack navigators is the ability to pass parameters between routes. <clears throat> Typically, when you render a component in React, you would pass in some data through props. But as we've seen already with rendering the navigator at the, the root of the app, uh, we have to use some other kind of construct because the navigator itself handles rendering the components for us. <coughs> and so because we don't have the capacity here to even, say, pass in some screen props to this next screen, um, there's this concept of passing parameters to, uh, to different routes. This is very similar, if you've used the web before, to the idea of like query parameters on a route. So you can add a question mark to the end of a URL and say, this value is this, and this is that. It's the same sort of idea. And so there are several approaches for how you can manage uh, passing parameters in. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, the first one is to pass in a second argument to the navigate function, which is an object where the key is the name of the param, and the value is the value of the param. You can also update the, the params for a given route by calling set params, and same sort of syntax for that. And when you actually want to read the param, you uh, call get param and pass in the name of it. And optionally, you can pass in a default value. So if it isn't provided, you fall back to some other value. So we'll take a look at what this looks like here. There we go. And I'm going to just I'm going to make a third screen where the third screen um, is going to 
just take a random number, and we're going to show the random number in our title and inside of the screen. So we can sort of demonstrate how you can use the uh, param in various places in your app. So this one, I'm just going to mark this as to do, because we haven't quite seen how to do that yet. I'll make a different color here, let's say purple. And we will just leave this, let's say, let's just make this one go back. So I'll go back. And let's register the route. So let's say three. OK, so we have screen component three. It has a title to do. And it doesn't do too much inside of it. Now we're going to look at the screen component two. And we're going to change it to pass in. I, uh, let's say number is random number. Um, of course, there is no function called random number. Let's just quickly define that. And that can just be. So that's a random number between 1 and 10. Random number. So now we've made it so on. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's change this one, actually. So, it's, uh, so the second screen goes to screen 3 instead of 1. And we navigate to the third screen, and we pass in a param called number. So when we want to actually use this param now, we will add a text element here and say this.props.navigation.getParam number. And let's make it stand out a bit and give it you know, font size, big font size. And lastly, we know we have to import this component. All right, so we have the number 9 there. If we go back, now we've unmounted that component. And so if we go back again as well, oh, it happened to be 9 this time also. There we go, 2. Um, and so we're passing in random numbers every time we go to that screen. We can also change this so we can add another button that says set params. And we'll say we're setting the number to another random number. So we'll say new number. And if we go to screen 2 and 3, see 3, now we can update that param while we're here. This isn't particularly useful for changing the uh, param when we're using it just in, in the render function of the component. But it does get very useful um, because it's a very important way for how you can pass data between the um, header of your component and the actual screen component itself. So, there's an alternative way to define navigation options, which is as a function. And the function takes in um, some object with various uh, properties. The one that's the most important is the navigation object. So this is the same as the navigation object that is available inside of the component itself when we say this.props.navigation. And so we know that since we have that, we could say navigation get param and get the parameter that's passed in and use it inside of our title. So I'm going to change this. So the function has to return an object still. Before it was an object, now it's a function that returns an object. And React Navigation just knows it says, if this is a function, let's call it and pass these uh, values into it and then take the, the return value, and that will be the navigation options for this route. So I'm just going to say number is navigation.getParam number. And go to screen th three. So we can see that now the number is in the header. You can imagine this is useful in many cases. For example, you navigate to a profile screen, and you might want to have the name of the user whose screen you are, or profile you're visiting up in, in the header. Um, there are really numerous use cases uh, for why you might want to apply this. Um, all right, so I think we're in a pretty good spot, spot there with params. Um, why don't we go ahead and add a button to the header as well? Um, so to do this, we can look back here. 
see that there's these two navigation options called header left and header right. Um, so let's go up there and I don't know, we can add it to screen two. Let's add a So we have a title, and let's say header right. And let's just give it a button. So on the second screen now, we have a button in the top right that says press me. And when we press it, it just says pressed. But we also have access to the navigation object. So if we want to, we could make this say dot navigate, or rather, sorry, not this dot props, just navigation dot navigate, um, route name three, and let's pass in not, a not so random number. Let's pass in 11, which is impossible to get otherwise. Right, and now we have 11 there. And so you can use this to essentially do anything you can do inside of your render function. It's just that the header is a separate component from the, uh, the contents that are rendered inside of the actual screen itself. And so to be able to manipulate those contents, you need to use the navigation options to specify what uh, the behavior should be and, um, and also to add components to the various uh, positions in the header, such as the right. Uh, or left, which I didn't include here. By default, it's the back button. Um, and header title, we've specified as a string, but that can also be a component. If we wanted to use uh, an image component as the title, uh, we could just swap out the string there for, for an image. Um, we could swap it out for a button as well. Doesn't render so pretty there. It's not measuring it properly, but uh, it's working out well, right? You can render it in that case. So you have to be a little bit careful in those situations, but uh, there you go. Great. Let's see where we are now. All right, let's take a, a few minute break, and uh, we'll continue after the break with integrating the Stack Navigator into the contact list example, um, and then with some other pretty fun stuff around tabs. And, uh, and composing navigators together. We'll end up with a, hopefully we'll get to the point where we have a switch with a stack inside of it, or rather a switch with a tab inside of it with stacks inside of the tab. So uh, some exciting stuff. <laughs> Thanks. All right, welcome back. And uh, thank you, Brent, for uh, introducing everybody to uh, React Navigation, uh, covering switch, uh, the switch navigator and uh, teaching a little bit about the, uh, the Stack Navigator. And uh, now I'd like to go dive into the code, uh, straight into the examples, and we're going to take a look at how we can put the Stack Navigator to good use. And hopefully our, uh, our example app is going to start to feel a little bit more like an app as we continue hacking on it. So um, here's where we were left with. We've got um, our app.js, and we've uh, added a couple of screens. We've got our app navigator, which is a switch navigator. And as you can see, you know, we can switch to add contact, and it just kind of instantly switches over to the form. Uh, but what we'd really like is we'd like more of a nice, uh, more uh, traditional uh, transition where it kind of pushes in from the side. So we can use the Stack Navigator for that. And the API for the Stack Navigator, as you've already seen, is really similar to the Switch Navigator. So we can actually start by just swapping out the uh, creators for these navigators. So here where we go uh, into, uh, we're calling Create Switch Navigator. It's our higher order component uh, that sort of sets up our top level navigator that we're going to render inside of our app right here. But instead of calling that, we're going to just call create stack navigator instead. So I'm actually just going to kind of rename it right here. And let's see what it looks like inside of our app. You can see the header appears. And when we tap add contact, it pushes a screen. And it pushes this form screen that we've, that we've got. Now, um, it still is not looking super great. Uh, we're going to want to sort of have some things in the header here. And we're also going to want to uh, add a, add a uh, the add contact button should actually be in the header, because um, that feels a little bit more, uh, a little bit nicer. 
So first, let's go ahead and jump into our uh, contact list screen and our add contact screen and set up the header. So our contact list screen right here, it doesn't have any navigation options set on it, but we can go ahead and set up some static navigation options. And we're going to go ahead and just put on a normal header, uh, which is via header type header title of contacts. And we're going to want to do the same thing in our add contact screen. We're going to want to have roughly the same sort of navigation options with add contact. Let's take a look. Here it says contacts. Nice, add contact. And the back button is just kind of working out of the box. All right, now let's mo move this uh, add contact button up into the header. So that would be in the contact list screen, because this is where we're going to want it. And so first, of course, we just put a header right. And uh, this is one of the sort of special uh, navigation options that, uh, that you can put inside of a stack. Uh, and you can see this link for more, for more details about what else you can have there. Uh, but our header right, in this case, let's just put a button, which we're going to want to import from React Native. Oh, we already are, actually. So add. And let's just have an empty on press handler right now. Oops. There we go. So it doesn't do anything. And remember, we're going to want to call navigation.navigate to the add contacts screen, or the add contact route. It's the route name that we have defined here in the, uh, in the stack navigator. Now, over here, we don't have access to the navigation prop. And that's because this is a static property that we're putting on our component. So we can sort of upgrade that by turning this into a dynamic navigation options, um, which is to say that it's a function. And that function is, is given an object of things, right? And we can access things.navigation, which is uh, what we're sort of doing here by destructuring it. And what we can do is we can put parentheses around here to signify that uh, this is a function that's returning this this object of navigation options. So now, hopefully, our button should have access to navigation.navigate. And indeed, it does. We can now navigate uh, to, our, to our form. Let's go ahead and delete some of these old buttons that we don't really need from our contact list screen. OK. Nice. Um, so now let's make it so that when you click on a contact, you can actually go into a new contact detail screen. That would be really nice. Um, uh, I'm going to review that in just a second. So let's go and add a brand new screen here in our Stack Navigator called Contact Details. And we're going to want to import this screen. We haven't made it yet, but we'll import it from the screen's place, from the screen's folder. OK. So the Contact de Details screen. I'm going to just going to jump over here and create that new screen right here. And I'm going to want to do a little bit of copy paste just so that we can kind of uh, get up and running a little faster here. Um, but this is nothing, uh, nothing that you haven't seen before. All it's going to be is a kind of empty screen. OK. Let's take a look. Well, we actually aren't linking to our contact detail screen, even though we've registered the route in the navigator. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, uh, you can see here is the row component is where we're actually rendering the contact row. But here we don't have access to this.props.navigation. But we do have it up here in the uh, contact detail screen. Oh, sorry, the contact list screen, uh, where we're rendering the section list contacts. So here, we're sort of providing all of the contacts that we uh, are getting in through our screen props. And we, what we can do here is we can add a new handler uh, for when a contact gets, gets pressed. So let's say on select contact, we're going to want to do something. And probably going to want to do something with this.props.navigation. But first, we need to implement this on select contact uh, prop inside of section list contacts. So I'm just going to. 
open that on up. The section list is using render item to uh, render each row. And this uh, row renderer here is being declared outside of our functional component, section list contacts. So we're going to want to uh, access the props that are being passed into section list contacts. So in this case, what we can do is we're actually going to take uh, this render item and we're going to bring it inside of our uh, component. So this way, we can define it based on the props. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pass our new prop, uh, what was it called, on select contact, to uh, the row. So props dot on select contact. OK. So we're rendering the row with the uh, contact item. We've provided the handler. Now, uh, the row itself isn't currently touchable. This isn't a button or anything. And we can uh, make it sort of touchable by replacing this view with a touchable component. So I'm just going to use touchable opacity. It's kind of the easiest to use. And this basically means that you can press this thing, uh, even though it's still basically a view. So when the press happens, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to call this.props. On select contact. But we need to specify which contact is being rendered or which, which is being selected and pressed. And we have that coming in through props. We have you know, a lot of information coming in through props about our current contact. So let's just pass that in over here and we'll see how we can use that. OK, so finally, here we expect that we're going to have a contact coming in through here. And now we have the opportunity to access this.props.navigation.navigate. So we can navigate to our contact details screen. I'm just going to copy over the call to navigate from there. Contact details. Let's see what happens. We can tap it. Oops, we haven't defined uh, the prop all the way down. And I think that's probably inside of row. And so we're referring to this.props, and there is no this.props. Because it's a stateless functional component, props is just coming in through the function. OK, now we're not getting any behavior at all. And that's because uh, we haven't actually uh, really uh, got, gotten, to this, gotten to this point. Let's, uh, let's throw in a debugger right here. Um, this is a, a quick trick that you can use to uh, to sort of uh, figure out where you uh, arrive in your code. When we tap our contact, we're not reaching our debugger. Otherwise, uh, I expect we would have uh, gotten here in Chrome. And Chrome is uh, it's jumped over here. Uh, so what we can do uh, is we can put a debugger earlier on. For example, our section list contacts, we're passing through the props.onSelect contact. Here we've got the touchable opacity. We're passing through props.onSelect contact. First, I'll put a debugger statement here to make sure that we are, in fact, reaching our button. Tap here. Aha. OK, and we can see that props is, in fact, our contact. So let's jump up to the direct parent of row. And I'm just going to wrap a little shim here, throw the debugger in, and hopefully we'll be able to observe at this point whether or not we're reaching here. So oh, we're still running the old code because we were stopped in the, in the row. We did reach on select contact of our, of our list. So here. Section list contacts when we're rendering it, I definitely do expect it to uh, to be reaching this uh, the debugger of our contacts list screen. On select contact, section list contacts. I'm going to double check that we're getting it from the right place here. Okay, well this does look like the right thing, so I'm going to I've got my debugger statement here. And I'm hoping to reach this top level breakpoint. OK. So here we're reaching it. And we, now we can see that we, we have made it here. We've got this.props.navigation. 
And we're calling .navigate with contact details. Let's double check to make sure that we've registered this correctly. And I can see now that I haven't saved my app file. That seems to have been the issue that was preventing us from navigating. So now we tap it, we reach our breakpoint, I hit play, and it's gone and navigated to our new screen. So this is a little bit of a live debugging uh, adventure when we figure out uh, how, to, how to avoid these, uh, these things. S step one is to save your files. OK. So we're navigating to our contact screen. But unfortunately, uh, the header is not looking very good, and we actually aren't even passing any information about the contact that we've navigated to. So the way we can do that is with, uh, by passing params. So when we pass params here, we can pass an arbitrary object of various pieces of information, like contact, like uh, contact.phone number. Oops. And we can also provide the name. And then inside of our contact detail screen, we can get the param by calling this.props.navigation.getparam. And we're going to want to get the uh, number here, so phone. Or do I call it number? Let's call it phone. OK, so it's displaying the number of our contact. And the other thing is up in the header, we want to be able to get the param as well. That's the header of our contact list screen. But we can also show the header of our detail screen that we haven't really configured. So we're going to create a static navigation options. And we're going to need access to the navigation prop. So this is going to be a dynamic navigation options where we get access to navigation. And we're going to want to return an object of options, including header right. Or sorry, in this case, it's just the header title, which we're going to want to grab from navigation.getparam name. So we tap here, and we're able to see our contact. Now, we also have this button that says, go to random contact. And the idea here is you might want to be able to link to other contacts, maybe to see the contact's sister or parents. Uh, so in this case, what we can do uh, is we can implement our go to random uh, method. Should be pretty uh, straightforward. Now, uh, go to random, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is actually get access to a random contact. Now, we have our contacts coming in through this.props.screenprops.contacts. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of logic that we're going to use to find a random contact. Uh, you don't have to look at this too closely, because it's kind of ugly code, actually. Um, so we're just going to grab the contacts from this.props.screenprops.contacts. And the phone is going to be coming from the param. As you can see uh, what we do up here, I'm just going to copy that right here. Except here, we're accessing uh, navigation. OK. So this.props.navigation.getparam for the phone number. Uh, and then what we can do here is we're going to have access to random contact. I'm just going to put a debugger statement here just so that we can see what happens when we get to this point. Hit go to random contact. And hopefully, we get stopped in the debugger. No contacts. That's, that's right. So it's a little bit confusing, because we're actually stalling uh, in this while loop right now. That's why I was saying this code is kind of bad. Uh, so we have uh, this uh, contact screen, which is, or this contacts file, which generates our, uh, our content. In this case, uh, we're only getting one contact. So when we try to get another random one, it's not going so smoothly. OK, now we've got multiple contacts. And when we tap go to random contact, we get here to our debugger. And let's take a look at random contact. It's probably an object with name and phone number. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, navigate to another contact screen, a contact detail. So this.props.navigate navigation. Navigate to uh, contact details. And we're going to want to pass the same information in. So we have the name which is the random contact.name. 
And we're also going to have the phone number. OK, so let's see what happens here. We're going to tap on our first contact. We're going to tap Go to Random Contact. Oh, that's strange. I expected to navigate to a new screen. Well, it turns out that we don't actually need to navigate to a new screen because we're already on contact details. So we called navigate to contact details with setting params. We provided these additional params. But what we're actually doing is we're just setting the params on the current uh, route, which is not exactly what we are going for. So instead, we can use this other uh, prop that's on the navigation prop uh, called push. Now, uh, push is always going to push a new screen. And you can also provide params to push. So navigate is going to navigate to your current route as identified by your route name. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, change this navigate to push. OK, so we tap on one contact. We see it. We go to another contact. And we go to all of our random contacts. This is great. Um, now, the push is only available inside of a stack navigator. And there are a few other uh, things that are specific to a stack navigator. Don't mind me while I rearrange this screen. So there's other things like push, uh, which adds a new screen. Pop takes you to the previous screen inside of the stack. Pop to top takes you to the top screen inside the stack. And replace is kind of like what we were just doing by accident with the navigate functionality. Now, let's talk about composing navigators. This is a pretty powerful technique that allows you to put one whole navigator visually inside of another. Now, this is you'll, you'll get a better intuition for this as we, as we move forward about when you want to be putting a navigator inside of another. Um, but generally, if you see uh, like a header on the screen, but you also see a tab bar on the screen at the same time, then that's a case when one of these navigators is actually inside of the other. And you'll notice that by switching tabs, you'll often move away from the whole header. Uh, and, or it could be uh, composed the other direction. Now, uh, the way that we do this is we actually register a navigator as the screen component of another navigator. And you should always be careful to make sure that your app only has one top level navigator. And the really great thing about composing navigators is that you can navigate pretty effortlessly between all of them. So if you just use the navigate functionality, and you uh, refer to a route name that's inside of another navigator, you'll automatically get over there. And Go Back also works between different navigators. And that's really essential for supporting the Android Back button so that the user can always get back, even if they're inside of a deeper navigator in the app. Cool. So this is what it looks like to compose a navigator. You can see that in this case, we're creating a stack navigator, as per usual, with two screen components. But then down here, when we're creating a switch navigator, it's our top level navigator, as you can see, because it's an app navigator. We're registering the stack navigator inside of it as the main route. All right. So like I said earlier, just one gotcha you should really be careful about is to never render a navigator inside of a screen like this. You only ever want to render a navigator by itself sort of at the top level. And you always want to make sure that the navigators are linked together uh, inside the higher order components, like you see here. Cool. So let's go ahead and uh, put our stack navigator that we just made inside of a new navigator. All right. So we can create a, a brand new navigator here. Instead of this app navigator, let's call it the main navigator. Oops. And that's a stack navigator. Now let's create a new app navigator. And the reason we're going to create these navigators inside of each other is because sometimes you might not even want to see the stack at all. Here we've got a stack navigator. But how about let's create an example where you want to log into the app before you even see the main stack. So in that case, you're going to be switched away from it. And you're only going to see like a login screen up until you're ready to see the actual stack. So that's why we're using a switch on the outside of our stack navigator. Let's go ahead and re register uh, the first route, which would be the main route. It's just a name. We can call it whatever we want. But I'm going to call it main because it's our main navigator once you're logged in. And I'm also going to create login. 
which is going to be a login screen that we haven't created yet. I'm going to set the initial route name to be the login screen, because we're going to want you to be logged out at the beginning. OK, so I'm going to get the Swish Navigator from React Navigation. And I'm going to get the Screen Navigator from Not Yet Implemented Area. OK, so let's go ahead and create our screen. And I'm going to copy and paste a super simple login screen. Oops. And our login screen is going to have a couple of styles. OK. So let's see what does our app look like. I think I might not have saved the app file. OK. So this is the login screen. Uh, this warning here is because we're currently uh, debugging, and we're kind of done with that right now. So, OK. So now we've got our login screen. Uh, we have that because the app navigator that we're rendering down here inside of the app. It is just a switch navigator, and the initial route is login. So all we see is the login screen. When we press to log in, well, we haven't actually implemented the login functionality. So let's pretend that we have a bunch of login logic right here. Uh, and instead of actually doing that, we're just going to jump straight to the navigation part. So let's do this.props.navigation. Oops. And we're going to navigate to the main screen when you tap Login. OK, and it switches us over to our stack that we've already implemented. Now, uh, what's great about uh, the Navigate function and what's great about composing navigators is that you can actually refer to several different uh, route names here. So here, of course, we're referring to the uh, route name for the other navigator. So it's just kind of telling us to switch to this navigator kind of whatever state that navigator currently is. The initial route name for that navigator is the contact list, so that's why we see that. But we could also explicitly navigate to the contact list. Let's try that. Press to log in. You jump to the contact list. OK, what if you want to explicitly navigate to something else? Like, let's explicitly navigate to add contact, just, just as an example. It wouldn't really make sense in our app. But maybe add contact is the first thing that you want somebody to do once they log in. OK? And it jumps you deep inside the stack, but it still is a normal stack navigation. You can still go back inside of the stack. OK. So here, that's a very uh, simple example of navigator composition. So now uh, it's, we've seen Switch Navigator, which allows us to switch between several screens. Um, but Tab Navigator is a little bit more special, because it actually has a tab bar that's uh, uh, useful for switching between the different screens. And also, uh, it'll keep the previous screens that had been available. It'll keep their state around. So uh, it doesn't actually unmount the components that go away. Um, and that's kind of handy, because when you want to switch back to the screen, it's really fast, and the state is still there. You know, If you had scrolled down inside of a certain tab, and you switch tabs and switch back, it's still going to be there. Now, there are several tab navigators that now, switch, that now ship with React Navigation. Um, including like two of these material themes navigators and a simple tab navigator, which is create bottom tab navigator. Uh, and as per the other navigators, the navigate function and the go back function still work. So navigate is how you switch to different tabs. And uh, go back actually does have behavior on tab navigator. It takes you back to the first tab. Uh, and this is relevant usually on the Android back button because you want to be able to jump somebody back to the first tab. But you don't want this in every case exactly. So the tab navigator's uh, go back behavior can be configured. It doesn't necessarily have to take you back to the first tab. So uh, with tab navigators, you can switch between two tabs. But keep in mind that the previous tab is still there. It's just not visible. All right, And the way that you create a tab navigator is much like the way that you create any other navigator. You're going to register a couple of routes uh, by their route name, and you're going to provide a screen component. OK, maybe we should just go jump into our application now and uh, implement some of these, uh, some of these tabs. Uh, OK, so this is where we are right now. Compress to log in. OK, 
You know, the other thing that I'm going to do that I kind of missed before, uh, actually with, with stack navigation, we're going to go ahead and theme it. We're just going to give it a little bit of a color. We've got these navigation options that, uh, in this case, we're configuring the header. So this is available inside of a stack navigator. So I'm going to go here to our stack. In addition to specifying the initial route name, I'm going to specify some navigation options that are going to identify the tint color. Ooh. OK, this uh, button we had rendered by hand, which is why it's not actually lining up. So let's go ahead and fix that really quickly. That would be on the uh, contact list screen. We can just provide a color right here. OK, the other thing is, of course, our login screen was deep linking here. Let's just make it go to the main navigator. OK, so now let's actually go and jump into adding our tab navigator. So I'm going to go into our app. And instead of the main navigator, uh, let's just go ahead and call this the contacts tab, because we're going to want to make it so that this whole stack of navigation happens inside of a particular tab. And you'll notice that it's a pretty common pattern, especially on iOS apps. So let's call this the uh, Contacts tab. And we're going to want to create a new navigator for the, what do we call it, the main navigator. So that can be our tabs. So the main navigator is Create Tab Navigator. And we're going to want to set up a couple of routes here, including, of course, the Contacts tab. And let's create a new tab, and that's going to be under Contacts. Let's create a new tab uh, for you know, a different area of your application that really has nothing to do with the Contacts. Um, I think a pretty su simple example that's somewhat common is like a Settings tab, where you can go and change some other configuration about the app. Settings screen. So Settings screen, we're going to go import from here, which we haven't quite created it yet. but we're going to go ahead and do that right now. And the settings screen, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of copy paste once again. And all we're going to be doing is just saying, uh, you know, this is a settings screen. It doesn't even need a, need a navigation link or anything right now because the tabs will be visible. So I haven't saved the app. Oh, I need to import Create Tab Navigator from React Navigation. OK, we're going to press to log in, switching to our main navigator, which is Tabs. OK, uh, it seems that uh, in the copy-pasted content that I had, uh, I had a slight, slight bug. I'm going to go ahead and just fix that by changing the scroll view to a normal view. It's going to be a little simpler, but now I, you can see that we have tabs at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and the first tab that's selected is the Contacts tab. The second tab doesn't even have a header or anything inside of it. And that's because we've switched entirely away from the other navigator, and the header was provided by the stack navigator. So these tabs are looking kind of ugly. Uh, let's go ahead and theme them a little bit. So uh, one trick that we have for theming tabs is by setting these tab bar options, we can set the active tint color, which is sort of the color of the active tab. So let's jump into there. Here where we're creating our tab navigator, we can set tab bar options and active tab color. I'm going to copy that from right here so that we have a nice cohesive theme for our app. Press to log in. Oops. My guess is I uh, had, a, had a nice typo here. So let me go ahead and find my, I see. I said acti it's active tint color and not active tab color. OK. So now our tint color matches. Now, generally, when we have 
uh, tabs at the bottom on an iOS app, you really want to have icons, because this just looks bizarre if you, if you don't. Um, so let's introduce a new concept of uh, adding vector icons to our application. Now, this is sort of how you can specify uh, the tab bar icon. But first, we're going to need to install a new library. So we're going to go to do npm install dash save React Native vector icons. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use uh, yarn. I'm going to go right here and say yarn add React Native vector icons. All right, while that's installing, I'm going to go start using it. As you can see, you can import it like this and uh, render it with a couple of conventions like that. So I'm going to grab my, uh, my snippet here. So here, you can see that we're manually applying navigation options onto the main stack. Or rather, uh, instead of the main stack, in this case, we've called it the Contacts tab. So we're going to set the options for the Contacts tab. And here, we are uh, using a pretty fun trick where we've got a string template. And the, the tab bar icon is a pretty special navigation option that uh, is defined as a function. And it's told both what the tint color is and whether or not the tab is currently focused. And the reason we need to know whether or not the tab is focused is because generally we're going to render a different style of icon. So, so we're going to render the iOS contacts icon uh, when it's not focused. Or re re so if it's focused, we're going to just render iOS contacts. And if it's not focused, then we're going to render iOS contacts outline. So that's what this, uh, this trick is doing inside of this. Uh, you know, we've got a ternary inside of our string template. So let's see if that works. I need to import Ionicons from React Native Vector Icons. OK. I'm going to press to log in. And our icon is showing up here. You can see that when we blur it, it switches to a different icon. So that's why uh, we have that kind of crazy uh, template string that's using, that we're using to select uh, the current icon. So let's go ahead and uh, do something similar for the settings screen. But here, we're going to actually put it on the screen static navigation options. So here, the static navigation options are empty. I'm going to want to pr provide a tab bar icon. And here, we're going to provide just kind of the same one for now, just to make sure that it works. OK, that looks a little weird. So I think it's going to be iOS options. Ooh, options. Looking nice. Great. So. Here, just to do a quick recap of uh, all the navigation features that we've added to the app in a relatively short period of time, I'm just going to open up the app, app file. And we're going to start at the bottom, where we're rendering our app navigator. Now, our app navigator can be given access to screen props, which are various um, properties that are going to be available on every single screen. Of course, uh, in larger applications, you might not want to use screen props, because it'll, it'll cause every screen to re-render when any of these screen props changes. So you might want to use a different technique uh, to deal with that. But here you can see we're just rendering our app navigator. Our app navigator is a higher order function, is the result of a higher order function call. It's a higher order component. Um, it's that we're creating a switch navigator. And that's why, at the very beginning, it covers up the whole screen, uh, because it's our top level navigator that's switching away from the stack, or away from the tab navigator. And that's uh, what we have in here. Inside of our main navigator, this is a tab navigator, where we've got two tabs. We've got the Contacts tab and the Settings tab. So first, we need to navigate on the outer navigator, which is the switch. And now we can access the inner navigators. Uh, in this case, the next inner navigator is allowing us to switch between these different tabs. Of course, uh, inside of the main tab, uh, inside of the Contacts tab, we have a whole stack. So that's uh, what we're uh, setting up up here with Create Stack Navigator. We're registering three screens inside of our stack. And inside of each of our screens, we're setting various navigation options. And the default navigation options are the ones that are provided down here. 
The navigation options are what's setting up the button in the header and the title, as well as the color. And each of these screens are able to navigate between each other using the navigate functionality uh, in this .props.navigation. So uh, I think that's a quick introduction to uh, what it's like to use React Navigation inside of a, a fresh React Native app. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. And if you've got any questions, don't uh, feel free to take a look at some of these additional resources that we have available for you. And uh, get in touch with me and Brent on uh, Twitter and GitHub. Thanks. <laughs>